Welcome to this webinar on ACA Edge. I'm Johan Andrian and I work as a principal engineer in the ACA and Calyx teams at Lightbend. In this short webinar, we will cover the new ACA Edge sample project, how it is built and what ACA Edge features it showcases. It should be possible to follow this webinar without much prior experience with ACA, although some understanding of the concepts, especially event sourcing and ACA projections, will make it easier. To set the scene, let's talk about what ACA Edge is. ACA Edge is a set of features in the 23.10 release of ACA, specifically built to simplify life for developers who build systems that span from the cloud to the edge of the cloud. There are many reasons why you would want to do this in modern systems. For example, you might want to be able to handle a cloud outage while still serving your customers. Or it could be about latency to co-locate systems closely with your actual users or client systems so that you get very low latency. The features in ACA Edge can of course also be useful when building non-edge systems with ACA. We have created a documentation mini site with an architectural overview, example use cases, and a feature summary, in addition to this step-by-step uh, -step guides. We previously have done the same for ACA Distributed Cluster, which was released with ACA 23.5 back in May. A lot of the functionality is built on top of event sourcing and the brokerless event propagation in ACA Projection gRPC. The guide in the documentation is a step-by-step -step workthrough of a sample application, describing the designs and the APIs and showing the source snippets of the actual services. The full source projects are available in both Java and Scala, so you can download it and try it out on your own machine. The domain for the sample is a system for managing food deliveries by drone. It keeps track of the drones, the restaurants and their orders. The system consists of two separate services, a central cloud service, which is built as an ACA cluster, which is thought of as something that will run in the cloud. Then we have the edge service. It can optionally run as a cluster, but by default is a single node system. The edge system or point of presence communicates with the cloud in a start topology. The idea is that the edge services will be representing different geographical locations. So each smaller edge service manages the drones in that particular geographical area. In the sample, the drones communicate with the edge service through gRPC because this is really easy to play around with locally when, when testing the sample but you can easily imagine that you would have some other protocol in a more realistic sample to talk to between your IoT devices and your edge services. Inside of the edge services, each drone is represented by a digital twin, an event sourced entity. Whenever the drone sends a command to the edge service, it is forwarded to the entity which then can respond or persist events corresponding to that command. The drones will frequently report their location to the edge service. So this is a lot of traffic between the drones and the geographically close edge service. Each such update is persisted in the database of the, of the edge service. Whenever a drones move enough to switch between coordinates in a more coarse-grained grid, a separate specific type of event is persisted. The events of the drones are then replicated to the cloud service over ACA projection gRPC. However, they are filtered to only replicate the coarse-grained events. So this means that the number of updates to the cloud is much lower and the cloud only knows of a, an approximate location of the drone at any given point in time. A 
let's look at the first specific ACA Edge feature. Uh, ACA Projection gRPC generally has the consumer connect to the producer to pull events from it. Edge services might not be available or addressable across the public internet because of security, name address translation, or firewalls, etc. But they can likely be allowed to connect to cloud services across the internet or across a net any network. ACA Projection gRPC producer push is a new feature that makes the connection come from the producer instead of the consumer. The consumer can still define filters that are propagated to the producer so that the payloads of events that should not be replicated doesn't go over the network and doesn't incur additional cost even though they are filtered. On the consuming side, the cloud in this case, the events are written directly into a consumer journal. Local projections in the cloud then run to consume those events and do actual processing. This can be anything from a single projection to many projections. And they, since they are all executing against the, locals, the local journal, there is no additional load on the actual edge services. The second new edge feature we have added is H2 support in ACA Persistence R2DBC. You probably want to keep your edge nodes small and you may want to avoid additional infrastructure at the edge. One of those aspects is the database. We have added H2 as a database option to ACA Persistence R2DBC and ACA Projections R2DBC, allowing for a low overhead in process persistence solution. H2 lives inside of the JVM, but can still store its state on the local disk. You should think of this storage as transient storage that can go away rather than a permanent long-term database solution. If building, building a multi-node service at the edge, you cannot use H2 as it would have a se separate database in each of the nodes rather than a shared database between the cluster nodes. Third new edge feature. Start from snapshot support in ACA projections. Imagine that a, an edge node is disconnected from the cloud for a period of time. The drones will still be able to talk to the local point of presence. It doesn't rely on this cloud connection. When the connection is reinstated, the cloud is not really interested in the full history of coordinate changes from the drones. It would rather want to just have the latest position. Start from snapshot allows to do this. So an event sourced entity has an optimization which is store a snapshot. We store the coarse grained snapshots in the database. And when the projection starts, it will start from the latest snapshot on every drone rather than replaying all the events that the drone has persisted since it was last connected. Let's move over to the cloud side. The cloud service is a single service that all the points of presence connect to. In this service, we have event source entities representing each of the restaurants connected to the system. A gRPC interface allows for interacting with that restaurant, creating restaurants and registering deliveries for it. Inside of the entity uh, of each restaurant, there is a queue keeping track of the orders that has been registered for that restaurant. The restaurant also has its geographical location uh, set from the start when it is created. Order events are then replicated to the edge services using ACA projection gRPC. Now we're using the normal uh, scheme of ACA projection gRPC where the consumer creates the connection. Uh, so the edge service is actually the service that connects, connects to the cloud and pulls the events. However, in the cloud, we have a filter that makes sure 
a producer filter that makes sure that orders only go to the location where the restaurant is located. So in this example, Mario's is located in the first edge service and the order will only be replicated there thanks to the filter. In the edge service, there is a single queue of orders for that edge service. When a drone connects to the service to pick up the next order, the service can look at the location of the drone, which it knows since the drone keeps, up, keeps updating it, and find the next order that is closest to the drone and assign it for delivery. Here we have the last new edge feature to mention. It is the fire hose, what we call the fire hose. We imagine that with this sample you would have a high number of edge consumers connecting to the cloud. Uh, normally with ACAD gRPC projections, each of them would lead to a parallel stream of polls to the database to pick up new events. This doesn't scale so well with the many edge service nodes. So we have added something that we call the firehose that creates a shared broadcast point where best case you would only have it polling the database for one stream per cluster and then the connected services will be downstream of this broadcast point. So this will decrease the load on the database a lot. What we didn't cover in this webinar that is also in the docs is an example showing how you can do a lightweight deployment and scale to zero for the edge services using native Graal images. In the sample projects, you can find the full source code in Java and Scala, as I mentioned, and also example Kubernetes YAML files to actually deploy this to a Kubernetes cluster. Thanks for listening to this webinar.